Hello viewers, my name is Mr. Kazim and I am delighted to welcome you to my YouTube channel at Smart Ed TV. Here you will find detailed tutorials on your science courses and tips on how to answer examination questions successfully. I started this channel to also share my knowledge and experience in this field and to give you tips on how to succeed as a university student. If you are looking for detailed tutorials on physics subjects, chemistry, mathematics, biology, statistics, and general studies, GST, then you have come to the right channel. So therefore, sit back, relax, and join me on this journey. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to never miss on an important update. Please remember to also share this video so that others can benefit. Thank you very much. Hello viewers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be looking at experimental physics. And the topic of discussion is on graph. How do we plot a physics graph? For us to plot a physics graph, it means we must have performed those that experiment in the laboratory. We've taken our readings, and the next example was to, to plot the graph to represent those readings on a graph. How do we do that? For instance, you are told to plot a graph of something against something. You are for instance, you are going to plot the graph of what? Voltage V against current. Against current. How do we start with this? Plotting the graph of voltage against what? Current. It simply means that on your vertical axis, we are plotting what? Voltage. While on the horizontal axis, we are plotting current. This represents what? Vertical axis. Why this represents what? The horizontal axis. And also, in choosing a scale, we must choose a suitable scale. How do we choose a scale from a given graph? After what, performing the experiment, you've known the what? The values of your V and also the values of your I. Now, for the V, you are not going to what? check those values. Check which is the smallest and also check which is the what? Biggest. From smallest to the what? Biggest. Check those values. It is now those intervals that will determine the interval, the best interval to choose in such a way that we are going to what, maximize that vertical axis. The same thing applies to the what, horizontal axis, which is what's current. Check the smaller value and also what, check the what, biggest value. It is this value that will now tell us the range of how our what, intervals should be in choosing the scale. This is very important. For instance, this is a what? Standard graph. Why is it a standard graph? It's a standard graph because each of these box is 2-2 two, two centimeters. If I measure this box with a meter rule or a ruler, it gives me 2 centimeters. So this is a what? Standard graph. And because of that, I must choose a scale in such a way that it will cover at least 3 over 4 of the entire graph. It will cover at least 3 over 4 of the what? Entire graph. Let's assume the whole of this board is my graph. At least I must what? Work out something like this. At least more than half. More than half of that graph. Don't choose a scale that will minimize the graph. Or don't choose a scale that, was, that won't be what? Evenly distributed. Your graph must be what? Maximize. The best graph is the graph that what? That actually what? Maximize the spaces. So please, let's get out of this. So the next thing, after we've got, we've seen what, how to what, choose a standard scale. After choosing the scale, and we've seen how to what, locate the axis level. And also, on your axis level, always indicates the unit. For instance, I'm plotting V against I. V against I. This is I in ampere. And also, this is what, V in volts. V what? Volts. I want to plot V against what? I. You can see my what? My own level. This is 
For the V, the unit is what? Small V, denoting volts. For the I, the unit is what? Capital A, denoting what? Ampere. So this is what? A what? A correct axis label. Don't just write V, don't just write I. Always include your what? Unit. And don't do mistake of what? Writing Y axis. And writing this one as what? X axis. No, that is wrong. This is a physics graph. Don't just what? Don't do mistake of what? Writing X and what? Y axis. Instead, call them by their what? By their units. Call them by their name. Because what you have given in the question. Plot a graph of V against I. Not a graph of Y against X. Another mistake that we used to do on the graph is in, what, in choosing a scale. For instance, if I have the values, if I have the values on my axis, if this is origin, let's say this is what, 5, this is 10, this is 15, and maybe this is what, 20. And on the what, horizontal axis, that is the I axis, let's say this is what, 2, this is 4, this is 6, and what, this is what, 8. Let's assume we are having this. In choosing a scale, you can see if this, all these values represent what each box. This is a box, box, box. They represent what each box, that is, each of these boxes on the world standard graph corresponds to what each of these values. In choosing that scale, since I know that the length of that box is 2 cm, that means on the vertical axis, I can say that what? Let's let each of the box is 2 cm. I can see that what let 2 cm to represent represent what? Now, check the intervals between what? Those values. From 0 to what? 5. From 5 to what? 10. What is the interval between those values? You will notice that what? The interval between them is what? Is 5, 5. They are in steps of what? 5. So it means on that, your graph, you are, your scale is simply what? You are letting 2 cm, that is each of the box, to represent 5, to represent what? 5, don't say 5 units. We, are, we used to make that mistake about writing unit. This is not mathematics, this is physics. Tell us that unit, mention those units by their name. 5 what? 5 volts. On which axis? On the word voltage, B what axis? The owner of this axis is what? V, not Y. Tell them the, not of, the name of what? That unit. Don't just say five units. No, that is very wrong. Since the owner of that axis is V, then I, was, I can call it what? Five volts on the V axis. Also, if you look at the horizontal axis that belongs to what? I, the current. What are you going to notice? The intervals between the first one and the second one is also what? Two, two. There are steps of 2. This is 2, 4, 6, 8. That means there are steps of what? 2. On the horizontal axis, I can see that what? Let, let 2 cm to represent. To represent what? Now, each of the, each of the what? Intervals are 2. So they will represent what? 2, two what? Don't say 2 units. Instead, call that unit by its name. Who is the name of, the, of this axis? It is what? Current. So represent what? 2 ampere. The unit of current is what? Ampere. So each of these represents 2 cm. 2 cm represents 2 ampere. On which axis? Who is the of this axis? On current axis. On what? Current axis. This is what? How to choose a, a, what? a suitable what? scale. Please, let's take note of this. Don't always use units. We are what? Formed of using unit. In physics, mention that unit. That is the essence of what? Dimensional analysis. Don't just tell me unit. Measure the word unit of that thing. If it is temperature, tell me it is what? Kelvin. If it, if it is pressure, tell me it is what? In millimeter mercury. Or even what? In Pascal. Don't just say that word unit. Always tell me the name of that unit. Okay? Since so we see now what? How we examine our scale, the next thing to look at is how to what plot the graph itself. How do we plot a what a physics graph? After what understanding those what units. Still using what this example, let's see how what how we plot graph. 
Let's see how we, how we plot a physics graph. For instance, we are given a table. Let's say it contains what? Voltage against what? Current. Voltage input against current in what? Amperes. Let's say this is what? The signal number. 1.00. Let's say the first one is what? 5.00. 2.00, 3.00, 4 .00, 5 .00, then last one 6.00. So I have 5, I'm having 10, I'm having 15, I'm having 20, I'm having 25, and I'm having 30.00. On the horizontal axis. So let's assume I'm having, let's say, 2. The next one, let's say what, 4. This, let's say what, 7. This one, let's say what, 8. This, let's say what, 9.00. Then this, let's say what, 12.00. What do you notice? You are going to what, notice uniformity in my table. How? They are all in the same places of decimal. If I'm using two decimal places, I should use two throughout. If I'm using three, I should use three throughout. If I want to use four, I should use four throughout. Please, let's take, let's take note of that. Okay? The next thing we are going to look at is now to see how to what plot these values. Is to see how to what plot these values. I want to plot a graph of V against I. That is, V on the vertical axis and I on the horizontal axis. If that is the case, if that is the case, I can have, I can have, so let me clean this. I can have two for seven. Let me manage this place. This is V against what? I. Voltage against what? Current in ampere. Let's assume this is the level of origin. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25 and 30. 30. And the other one, let's say I'm adding here, let me call it 2, followed by 4, 6, 8, 10. Then the last one, 12. So let's assume I'm, what, I'm adding this to work on. On the first one, I'm adding what? 5. 5 corresponds to what? To 2. 5 votes corresponds to what? To 2. So I'm marking the place. For the second one, 10 corresponds to what? To 4. 10 corresponds to what? 4. I'm marking it around here. And the next one, 15 corresponds to what? 7. 15 corresponds to what? 7. So this is 7 around here. So they meant around what? Around here. 7 is in between what? 6 and 8. The next one corresponds to uh, that's 20 corresponds to 8. 20 corresponding to what? 8. Corresponding to 8. They met around here, so I can what? mark it at that point. The next one, 25 corresponds to 9. 25 corresponding to 9. So where is what? My 9. My 9 is in between what? 8 and 10. It's in between 8 and what? 10, so I can what? Have this. And what? The last one, I'm having what? 30 corresponding to what? 12. 30 corresponding to 12. Corresponding to 12. So I have something like this. So these are my points. You will notice that some of the points are what? Are a little bit deviated, where some are aligned on the what? On the straight line. So if I want to choose my best fit, I'm going to choose my best fit in such a way that is to cover at least two points from those other points. It must cover at least two points from the other points on the graph. Please, let's take note of this. Don't always force your point to align on the best fit. Don't always force your point to align on the what? Best fit. Why? It is impossible for you to plot graph without an error. If all the points align on the what? On the best fit. You are trying to tell the examiner that your graph is perfect. 
without what? Error, which is impossible. So, for you to what? To choose the best fit, choose the best fit that it will at least make it will at least touch two points from those other points of the words of the best fit. So, so I want to draw my words, my line now. I can have something like this. So this was my line of best fit. This is my what? Line of best fit. In which, in some question, they may ask you to calculate what the x intercept or the y intercept. That means the intercept either on the b axis or on the what? i axis. Where it calls the what? The vertical axis is the intercept on the vertical axis. And if it calls the horizontal axis, then that is the intercept. That point that it touches the horizontal axis. That value there is the intercept on the horizontal axis. So here, the has to work to calculate the intercepts on the what on the vertical axis, which is what just about what point one, because it's just a bit above the zero mark. So this is how it works. We draw the line of best fit. Thank you very much.